Hey guys, this is Evan from Easy Origami, and today I'll be teaching you how to fold Celestial, an origami kusudama designed by Joseph Wong. This model requires 30 square sheets of paper. Each unit is folded from one square, and if this is your first time folding this model, I recommend using 4 inch or larger squares to fold the units. Using 4 inch squares will result in a star about 6 inches wide. And I'm going to be using paper with color on one side and white on the other just to make it a bit easier to follow along but you can also use paper with color on both sides. You will only see one side of the paper on the completed model. And once you've prepared your paper, then we're going to start with our first square with the colored side up. And then we're going to fold in half vertically. So take this right edge and fold it over to the left edge. Align the corners and the edges. Then make your crease. And then unfold. And then we're going to turn the paper over to the white side. And then we're going to fold in half horizontally. So take this bottom edge and fold it up to the top edge. Align the corners and the edges, then make your crease, and then unfold. And now we're going to fold over this right edge and align it with the center vertical crease. So we're just going to pull this right edge over to the left, and once the entire colored edge is aligned with that existing vertical crease, then you can make your crease. And then we want to do the same thing on the left. So this time we want to take this left edge and we want to align it with the colored edge that we just folded in. So we're just going to pull the left edge over to the right. And once both of those colored edges are aligned in the center of the model, then you can make your crease. And once you've done that on both sides, then you can turn the model over. And now I want you to notice this existing horizontal crease. And what I like to do is slightly lift up the paper and pinch that crease from the top to make sure it's a mountain fold. So just pinch along the top like that. And then we want to use this mountain fold as a reference to create a new crease here. And we're going to do that by pivoting our new crease from this point here where the mountain fold intersects with this left edge. So again, we want to pinch the mountain fold from the top, but this time you just want to do it on the right side. So you just want to pinch the layers together on the right side like this. And you can already start to see that we're pivoting from this point on the left. Sometimes I even find it helpful to make a small pinch mark at that pivot point. And then you want to continue pulling the layers on the right over to the left, just like this. And you want to pull those layers over until this corner aligns with the existing vertical crease on top. So once this edge is aligned at that point, as well as the pivot point down here, then you can crease through all layers. I actually find it easiest to lift up this top layer of paper, so simply fold it over to the left, and then make your crease directly on these layers underneath. So just crease through all layers, and then you can unfold. And you can see that we've added this crease here. And now we're going to do the same thing in the opposite direction. So this time we want our new crease to pivot from this point here, where the horizontal mountain fold intersects with this right edge. And we're going to do that by pinching this mountain fold from the top. But you only want to lift up the left side of the model like this, because we want to pivot from this right point here. So again, I find it easiest to make a small pinch mark to make sure you're pivoting from that point. And then you can continue to pull the layers from the left over to the right. And you want to pull those layers over until this colored corner is aligned with this vertical crease on top. So once that corner is aligned and you've made sure that your crease pivots from that right point, then you can crease through all layers. I find it slightly easier to lift up this top layer of paper by pulling it over to the right and then creasing directly on the layers underneath. But once you've done that, then you can unfold and you can see the model is now symmetrical. So from here, we're going to rotate the paper 180 degrees and we're going to do the same exact thing. So we're going to start by making a crease that pivots from this point on the left. Again, we want to pinch this horizontal mountain fold from the top and we want to pull the right side of the paper over to the left while pivoting from that left point. And you want to pull those right layers over until this colored corner aligns with this vertical crease on top. Once you've done that, then you can crease through all layers, or I prefer to lift up this top layer of paper by folding it over to the left, and then creasing on these layers directly underneath. Once you've done that, then you can unfold. You can see that you've made this crease here, and then we're going to do the same thing one last time. So we want our new crease to pivot from this point on the right here. So we're going to pinch this horizontal mountain fold from the top, and we want to pull these left layers over to the right, while pivoting from this right point. So you want to continue pulling those layers over to the right until this colored corner aligns with the vertical crease on top. Once everything is aligned, then you can flatten out the paper, or I suggest lifting up this top layer of paper and making your crease on these layers directly underneath. Once you've done that, then you can unfold and your model should look like this. And now we're going to make an angle bisector on the bottom of the model. So we're going to do that by aligning this right edge with this existing diagonal crease. So we're simply going to lift up this bottom right corner and we want to align this colored edge with the existing diagonal crease. Once the edge and the crease are aligned, then you can make your crease, and then you'll notice this extra white flap of paper at the bottom. You can simply fold that up as far as it goes, 
and then crease sharply through all layers. Then we're going to rotate the paper 180 degrees and we're going to do the same exact thing. So again, we're going to lift up this bottom right corner and we want to align this colored edge with the existing diagonal crease. So once the edge and the crease are aligned, then you can make your crease and then you can fold up that extra white flap of paper as far as it goes. So just crease sharply through all layers and your model should look like this. And now we're going to do the same thing on the left. So this time we're going to lift up the bottom left corner and we want to align this colored edge with the existing diagonal crease underneath. Once the edge and the crease are aligned, then you can make your crease and then you can unfold the flap that you just folded in. Then from here, we're going to rotate the paper 180 degrees and then we're going to do the same thing on the other side. So once again, we're going to lift up this bottom left corner and we want to align the folded edge with the diagonal crease underneath. Once everything is aligned, then you can make your crease and then you can unfold. And then we're going to turn the model over. And now we're going to fold the entire model in half along this existing horizontal crease. So we're just going to lift up the bottom half of the model. And now we're essentially going to crimp along existing creases. And we're only concerned about this top layer of paper here. So I first want you to focus on these two valley folds at the bottom of the model here. And we want to start by collapsing along both of those valley folds at the same time. So we're simply going to push the left and right edges in towards the center of the model. Then as you're doing this, I want you to notice this small mountain fold in the center of the model. And we want to reinforce that crease at the same time. So we're simply going to push up from underneath the model to reinforce that mountain fold, just like this, while at the same time collapsing along those two valley folds. So if you continue pushing up from underneath the model, you'll see that the rest of the model will start to collapse along existing creases. So just continue pushing those two valley folds together as far as they go. And then at this point, I think it's easier to look at the model from the side. So we're simply going to rotate the paper like this. And then we just want to flatten out the model. So I suggest pushing your thumb up in between the layers on the right side of the paper, just to make sure the layers are oriented correctly. Then you can push the layers on the top and the bottom of the model together just to flatten everything out. So just flatten it out like this, and you'll see you've created this diamond shape. Then we're going to rotate the paper 180 degrees, and we want to do the same thing on the right. So once again, I suggest pushing up on the layers with your thumb to make sure that everything's in the correct orientation. And then you want to push the layers together on the top and the bottom of the model just to flatten everything out. Just like this. You can put the model down flat to reinforce existing creases. And then you should have something like this. Then we want to rotate the model so that we're looking at it from underneath. And I want you to notice this triangular flap that we crimped in the previous step. And you want to make sure that your paper is oriented so that that triangle points towards the left. Then from here, we're going to make a small angle bisector. And we're going to do that by aligning this short horizontal crease with this tall vertical crease. I find it easiest to put your thumb on the tall vertical crease. And at the same time, you want to push this corner over to the right. So we're just going to push the corner over like this. And you want to push it over until these two creases align. Then you can slightly flatten out the paper. And you can see you've made this small angle bisector here. And we want to do the same thing on the other side, but I find it easiest to again push down along those vertical creases. And while keeping your thumb in place, you want to bring this corner back to align with this corner here. So we're just going to bring those two corners together just like they were before. And in the process, you'll be creating an opposite angle bisector. So if you open up the model, you'll see you've created an angle bisector on each side. And most importantly, you've created this backward Z shape. Once you have that, then you can close up those layers and you can flip the model over to the other side then this is one completed unit. Now you must fold 29 more. Once you've folded all 30 units, you're going to need two to start the assembly. Then look at one, and you'll notice that it has a flap like this on each side, and it also has two pockets in between these white layers here on both sides of the model. So once again, we're going to take our second unit, and we want to insert the second unit's flap inside the first unit's pocket. And I mentioned that there's two white pockets on each side of the model, so we want to insert the second unit's flap inside of this topmost pocket on the first unit. And we're going to do that by lifting up both units, and then we want to bring them together like this. Again, by inserting the second unit's flap inside of the topmost pocket on the first unit, just like this. And you want to slide the flap inside as far as it'll go until the units are pretty much aligned. And once both units are aligned on top, then we're going to turn the model over and make sure both units are aligned on the back side. So from here, I want you to notice this Z-shaped layer on the second unit. And we want to make sure that the first unit is tucked underneath it. So we simply need to rearrange the layers so that the first unit is tucked underneath that Z-shaped layer on the second unit, just like this. You can tuck the first unit all the way inside, and you'll see that the units will kind of lock together. So the Z-shaped layer kind of holds both units in place. So once the two units are aligned on the backside, 
then you can turn the model over once again. And now we're going to add a third unit the same way. So this time we're going to insert the third unit's flap inside of this rightmost pocket on the second unit. So we're going to do that by lifting up all three units and then bringing the second and third units together like this. Again, making sure that the third unit's flap goes inside of the rightmost pocket on the second unit. Then you want to slide the flap inside of the pocket as far as it goes until the second and third units are completely aligned. And once the units are aligned on the front side, then we want to turn the model over and make sure they're aligned on the back side as well. And again, I want you to notice a Z-shaped layer on the third unit, and we want to make sure that the second unit is tucked underneath it. So we just want to rearrange the layers, again, making sure that the second unit goes underneath the Z-shaped layer on the third unit, just like this. And you'll see that both of those units are now aligned. Once the units are aligned on the front and the back side, then we can turn the model back over. And now we want to connect the first and the third unit the same way to make a point from three units. So we're going to do that by slightly rotating the model so that we can see the flap on the first unit. And once again, we want to insert the first unit's flap inside of this rightmost pocket on the third unit. So we're going to do that by bringing the first and the third units together, just like this, essentially creating a little pyramid shape in the center of the model. And from here, I would at least try to bend this flap and tuck it directly inside of the pocket, but I find that can be a little bit difficult to do. So instead, I prefer to partially unfold this third unit. So if you basically unfold the crimp on the third unit, you'll see that you now have access to this colored layer, and you can simply tuck the first unit's flap inside. So just push it inside as far as it goes, flatten out the model, and then just recollapse that crimp along existing creases. And once the first three units are aligned on the front side, then we're going to turn the model over and you want to make sure they're aligned on the back side as well. So basically you want to make sure that all three units are aligned, and you want to make sure that these Z-shaped layers create this kind of configuration here. If you've done that, then you're good to go. And you can turn the model back over, and now you've made a point from three units. I taught the initial assembly using three colors to help you learn how to create these three unit points. And now that you understand how to do that, I'm going to be switching over to a slightly smaller model in all blue. And now that we've created our first point from three units, we want to repeat this process by creating another point and adding two more units to the end of this unit here. And now you've connected two of those points. So again, we want to repeat this process and create another point here by connecting this unit to two more units. And now we've created three points. So you just want to repeat the same process on the ends of these two units here. And now we've connected four points. And the goal is to create a five-pointed star, so we want to use these two units as well as an additional unit to create that fifth point. And this is what the model will look like once you've connected five points. As you continue with the assembly, you also want to flip the model over every once in a while and make sure that the layers are all oriented correctly. So just make sure those backwards Z-shaped layers are all in the correct orientation and make sure everything's looking symmetrical. Once everything looks good on the back side, then you can turn the model over. And from here, you want to continue adding units the same way. So you want to start by creating these three unit points, and you want to arrange five of them to create these five pointed stars. So just repeat this process until you've assembled all 30 units. And once you've assembled all 30 units, then your origami celestial kusudama is complete. I hope you've enjoyed this video tutorial on how to fold the celestial kusudama designed by Joseph Wong. Feel free to upload photos of your completed model to the YouTube gallery on my website to be featured here in my next video, or simply upload your photos to Instagram with the hashtag EasyOrigami to be featured here as well. Also, be sure to check out Joseph's Instagram for more of his impressive work. He also posts a bunch of free diagrams on his website, so be sure to check that out as well. I'll post the links in the video description below. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up or leave a comment below. And of course, subscribe to my channel and hit the notifications bell for more videos like this. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.